All right. Hey, good morning, folks. Once again, we are back taking a look at the tropics. Today is Wednesday, July 31st, 2024. This is your morning update on the tropics, including our little wave in the Atlantic Basin, our main player here today. We're closing out the month of July with a little area of interest, but no active storms. Barrel was the only uh, thing of note in the month of July, so started off with a bang and then got really quiet. But uh, this wave, as we turn the page to August, will likely give us our next name system later on towards the weekend. So if you missed the first video a couple days ago, we had a tropical wave leave Africa, and it's been moving across for the last several days. Currently this morning, it is located somewhere to the north of the Antilles and Puerto Rico. It is not an organized system yet. It's just a tropical wave moving along, and it is producing some more thunderstorms today. So we're going to go ahead and talk about the latest update with the wave, what we know, and what we can kind of throw out as possible solutions, and then narrow down a little bit on what we expect, although details are still very unclear, as we always talk about with tropical systems that haven't developed yet. Until we actually get something to latch onto and track, it's kind of difficult. I've always told people it's like if I told you a, a race was starting for horses and there was like five horses, but they're not starting at the same starting line. They're all going to start in random parts of the track. And I was like, who's going to win? You'd be like, well, what? I don't understand how, how am I supposed to even begin to. And that's kind of what this like is like. Until you actually get the storm developing, it's very difficult to make a lot of broad range forecast uh, calls. So we're just going to kind of talk about what the latest is this morning. National Hurricane Center, as of uh, 8 o'clock this morning, 60% chance of development in the next seven days, but still 0% in the next 48 hours. So the Hurricane Center thinks this will at least be Friday, if not Saturday or after, when this actually does become a named storm. So no rapid intensification is expected here in the next day or two. Um, looking at the satellite presentation this morning, one check we do have is that we do have some persistent uh, thunderstorm activity. It's very disorganized, very loosely held together. Um, there is no center of circulation. It's still a very broad wave axis, but we do have consistent thunderstorms all throughout the region here. And that tells us at least one thing. This isn't going to just go away. It's not going to be a silent wave that never develops. Then we go, oh, oops, never mind. Forget about it. You know, this is, this is trying to get itself established. And all these thunderstorms starting to pop up, they're taking all that moisture that's all kind of wrapped up in the low levels and they're bringing it up with them and then they kind of release that moisture out and they're moistening up the column so that you can get more robust and consistent thunderstorm updrafts which lead to the pressure falls which leads to the rotation which leads to the actual tropical system tropical depression slash storm development so it's working on that but the mid levels are pretty dry and it's going to have to take some time to get these thunderstorms consistently going off over and over, you know, falling up, collapsing, but bringing up, collapsing to get it to actually get in a position where it can then, you know, sustain the activity long enough to to become a tropical system. So that's what it's trying to do today. But doing this is important enough to know that, you know, again, this isn't going to just probably go away. So we're going to have something to deal with this weekend. The question is, what exactly? I'll show you two models and I'll show you the outlier First, the GFS model has been the outlier from the start with this, and it continues to show us some pretty wacky solutions. And I'm going to show you this tidbit real quick uh, on Tropical Tidbits, actually, because I want people to understand that when people show you these computer model shots and they don't know what they're talking about and they just post the end of a run with no context, it's pretty silly. So let me show, let me run through the, G, through the GFS real quick. Let me just show you what's going on. This is starting uh, this afternoon, 0Z on Thursday, August 1st, so the end of the day today. Um, We'll just run this through to do to do up. Oh, we got something forming south of Cuba. It pushes it well off into the Gulf of Mexico, spins up to a tropical storm. Now we got a hurricane hitting probably Pensacola dead on cat two, cat three. I don't know, something like that. And then it buzz saws along the coast for like four days and then goes into Mississippi on Sunday. Now, some dishonest weather page is going to take this screenshot and go, oh, no, Pensacola, get ready. A cat three's coming. Look at the GFS. But let me show you real quick how this actually we got to this point. Let me, let me let me back up for you. So what GFS did is it brought the wave a little more south and a little weaker at the start, thanks to a stronger Bermuda Azores high the GFS sees. And then right there, you may not see anything right there at the first glance, but right there, that's a little lee side trough and a little tiny low vortex inside the lee side trough. The lee side trough being the mountains over Haiti and uh, Dominican Republic. With the winds blowing across there, it creates a little trough of low pressure on the uh, lee side, the other side of the winds. And it takes that tiny little vortex and then runs it along south of Cuba, anchors the entire wave to the vortex, and then spins it up into a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. 
that's probably not likely. I'm gonna go ahead and just tell you right now, that's not impossible. You you can't fully discount that lee side troughing effect. I mean, you could see that happen, but is it likely, or especially likely in the way the GFS showed it? Probably not. So possible, not probable would be the way I would go with this. So again, when you see death runs like this, just kind of know that there's more to the puzzle usually. I'll show you the European model though, because that is probably the much more likely solution. The European model has been far more consistent with what it wants to do with this wave, which is bring it north of the Greater Antilles, Puerto Rico, and uh, Dominican Republic and Haiti. And then over, you know, about Friday into early Saturday, we still have a wave axis, but it's moved up into the Bahamas. And more, much more likely what is, would happen is the northern lobe of this wave axis would be what actually develops. This would have the greatest contrast of between the high and the low. So that's kind of where you would see this low try to form up here. Uh, it would also have the most help with the vorticity and background and all that. So that's probably where you would see the low pressure try to develop. Now, on this particular run of the Euro, it doesn't really develop it much at all. It, it kind of leaves it as an open wave, and then it kind of begins to spin it up somewhere around central Florida off the coast. Now, this is close enough for some impacts, but definitely not like serious tropical storm impacts. This would be pretty weak and likely would be lopsided. Um, and then it brushes it near Florida and then moves northward from there, becoming a tropical storm off the coast of the Carolinas. And on this particular run, moves away without actually hitting land. Now, within that potential solution, there's a lot of other possible solutions. I'll go ahead and take you to the European model ensemble members, which show all the different other possibilities with the European run. And you'll see here that clustering is good. We have a pretty good confidence that this will probably move up somewhere near Florida and then get very close to the Carolinas and Georgia as it tries to recurve. Now, within this cone, there could be outliers, again, as further east, as it maybe comes in near Miami, goes up the coast of Florida, and just kind of goes into the uh, eastern U.S. It could stay a little bit further offshore and not really bother anybody. It could basically just ride the coast. We've seen storms do that. They basically just ride along the coast, and they pop up offshore. I think, like, Isaias did that in 2020. I think it had a very similar track. So considerations for the U.S. East Coast, if that were to happen. Start with Florida. In this case, if a storm got very close to Florida, you would have probably some kind of direct tropical storm impacts, or at least something very close to it for Southeast Florida. Jacksonville and the Space Coast being a little bit more on that recurve or curvature of Florida might be on the fringe of it. The coast would definitely get some rough weather, um, but uh, it looks like if it did begin to bend away, Y'all wouldn't get anything too bad. But again, that that micromanage like we've seen with Matthew and with um, with Isaias and the uh, I think like Elsa and some other ones like they all kind of do this thing where they come up and they get close and exactly how close they get matters a whole lot. So the good news for Florida is you should generally be on the quote good side of this storm. So you the right side of any hurricane you know or tropical system is where the most rainfall and winds are going to be so you'd be on the quote better side of the storm and then that's also kind of true for the carolinas and georgia but that also assumes we don't get something like where it comes up grazes florida and then maybe turns a little bit more lazily and makes some kind of landfall into south carolina or even north carolina so if you're in either south or north carolina you still have a lot of considerations here and a bona fide tropical storm or hurricane is not off the table yet because what's going to probably happen is it's going to struggle until the Bahamas, but things get really favorable around this area. You have the Gulf Stream, which is even deeper, warmer water than what it's already going to have in the Bahamas. You've got light wind shear and you've got plenty of moisture. So, and you'll probably have some help because there's probably going to be a very minor upper trough kind of ventilating the storm. So you should have a potential for some pretty good intensification when it's in this area. So if I was in the Carolinas, I would be keeping a very close eye on it. And of course I would be in two in Florida, but it looks like unless something really goes haywire, you know, it's not going to have a lot of time to get very strong as it's passing by. So if I was in Florida, I would definitely expect periods of heavy rain. I would definitely expect rip currents, and I would expect some coastal flooding already, and that's all at the coast or close to the coast. If I'm inland, you're going to probably just get enhanced thunderstorms. Um, but if it takes a little bit more of a westerly track and gets very close, you know, you might have tropical storm watches or warnings up or down the coast to worry about. But that's kind of like what we've got in a general essence here this morning. There's just not a lot else to work on yet because we just don't have enough information. Again, we know it's probably not going to go into the western Gulf of Mexico and hit Pensacola as a four. We 
it's probably not going to do that hopefully um what we do know is that it's not going to just go away and it probably is going to cause some rough weather this weekend and even into early next week and folks across the southeast u.s florida georgia and the carolinas should be closely following the progress of it we're going to keep you updated as well i believe the hurricane hunters are expected to go in there today and investigate this but it, again it's going to probably need another two or three days to get going and then it'll be moving up this weekend Things will probably fall into place fast. It will probably be named, and watches and warnings may be issued closer uh, together. I will have as much coverage as I possibly can. I am working a lot this weekend, but um, I will have continuous updates uh, probably from now on on Facebook for sure, and we'll probably have another video when things get a little closer to time for it to start going off. So that's what I got for you guys this morning, your tropical update. Uh, again, check the Facebook page for more consistent updates and information. And as always, guys, thanks for watching and have a good one.